Digital is the big bluff that executives, businessmen, students, or young people who want to be Zuckerberg tell themselves. In the vernacular, crap. And someone has to say it. Hi, I'm Aaron Acher. In free translation, it's the other one. And I have to give you a few words about my record to validate what I just said. I was lucky enough to do some significant C-level roles in marketing, digital, sales, and content at some of the biggest media and publishing players. And my last position was CDO at one of the giant telecom groups. I had my startup, which was acquired by a large group, and I published a book called Digital Age Marketing, and which has sold more than 10,000 copies and is being studied at main institutions. My affair with my students is something that I've learned and received so much from that if they have known, they would have charged me for this. I learned a lot of things in my life from linguistics and philosophy and literature and computer programming and business and marketing, but no less things I learned on my own. Because at young age, I realized that it's better you ask it yourself. When someone does the same thing or behaves in a similar way, something in the mechanism is knocked out. So I try to exercise common sense in a great many things that people always said they must work great. Today, I want to offer you three things that might open up your mind after all the stories you've been watching in the last hour on Instagram, or they might open up your business or your career or other decisions in life. Because it all starts in marketing, but real marketing, not the one who makes mostly fireworks and no much more. So let's start with the first thing. The digital revolution has lifted the world. Just look around. See what has happened here. And new influencers are broadcasting themselves to death from their dining room. Uber, Get, Wix, Fiverr, everything remotely, everything conveniently, content, knowledge. The world is ours. But is it really? It turns out that the digital revolution is like other hysterics. They have repeated themselves throughout history. Like the gold rush in California almost 200 years ago. And it looks like this. There is a trend, and if you join it, you're in business. Then, as it it was in California, it's the merchants who cut the coupon until the next hysteria. So what happened along the way? What did we learn? about digital or digital age marketing that made us technicians. And what I call technicians is, for example, a junior or an intern campaign manager. He's learning how to run the system, but he's not yet a marketing executive. And if he wants to be like that, he will have to learn and explore much more than just the practical experience in PPC. We've all been taught that There are sales funnels, and there are leads, and there is the magic word performance. Now, the CEO will want to know how many leads he bought, or how many of them became a deal, and then they can celebrate. Because, you see, we're talking about understanding the market, but in practice, in a great many marketing activities, we're like market peddlers. There are actually quite a few talented people in the agencies, but if someone made the customer used to measure the final results only, then that's what he wants. He wants performance, fast, and then a whole chain of executive waste resources on something the competitor is doing just the same. But factually, when you do exactly what your competitor does, and target the same audiences, a few things happen. One, you fail to stand out. You really have no differentiation unless you really believe that shouting a free month or 30% discount or declare the collection everyone is talking about is differentiation. But you don't really think so, right? Second, you're wasting a budget because you have no differentiation. 
and for other reasons, of course. And three, as mentioned, you're wasting your time and the time of precious human resources running around their own tail. So, what I want to tell you is that digital is not what you were told. And if there is no coordination of expectations about what is really produced from all of this in the end, it turns out there are some sides in the story that no one is happy with. Not the brand, not the business executive that is fighting over cramps, and not the marketers that have become technicians. Now for the second thing. Which employees get more credit than others and which employees with real contribution are missed? On the face of it, the salespeople, the ones who bring in the money, get most of the attention. And that, unfortunately, leaves less room for talented people with fresh or creative thinking. And without such people, there is no growth, no development. You do not grow from doing the same thing. Let me offer you another angle. In fact, in a great many organizations and platforms, not always the salesperson is the parameter that affects the sale. I guess most of them are fine, but in the end, the customer buys a product or a value. The salesperson's smile or perhaps a quick sales ploy can work, but we cannot ignore the customer's intention that existed before the call. Digital has long since begun to, to, to criticize some of the uh, perceptions. For example, we realized that the sale did not necessarily come from uh, our Google ad that the customer clicked on because there might have been um, several steps on the way to his decision to sign up. For example, he came across an uh, ad of digital strategy master degree on Facebook and he went to the college website because he got interested and still he left no details. And then with remarketing, he actually meets this video in which I give you a taste of my lectures. Then he googled Ono Academic Campus and clicked. Even the big platforms have realized that businesses are putting the crown on the wrong head. And they are trying to prove that the customer's purchase decisions is built in a process that has been contributed by several factors in the brand's marketing moves. So why not look at the salespeople like what they actually do. The organizations worked hard to produce um, an attraction to the products. And it is absolutely possible that the customers already came prepared and the salesman has just closed, just closed the deal. Why attribute most of the weight to the sales force and not to what built the whole journey? Why do we not learn from history? And now for the third and last thing. So what are the really important things that marketing executives and other managers should put their chips on? Well, strategy seems like a high level word, but we do not invest in it even 5% of the time and passion in which we run to count leads and sales for which we have to rework time after time again and again. And I'm not uh, blaming us because if something we announce as a strategy, but actually we, we look for another source of leads like influencers, it's not a strategy. And then of course we will not use it because it will not bring the light. Strategy should be learned not in templates. And those who are going to study marketing in this era should look for how to build what your brand uh, offers and it should offer something that is more than quick wins and the percentage way. Um, because as of today, just look around and you may very well find that 70 to 80% of the players in your category use similar value propositions to yours. 
And if you do the same thing and not bring anything new, your activity probably won't bring any news either in your reports. Even if Black Friday is coming to save you, because it's coming to save your competitor as well, a modern marketer who does not want to stay in place must make a difference, strive to solve, and in the process, perhaps bring a move that will be worth 20 campaigns throughout the year. And I'm not talking about a crazy funny video that, that has nothing to do with the product. The big sales will be brought by the strategist, the one who knows not to jump on every trend and every platform uh, that could have uh, mass audiences that may not notice us at all. The one who knows how to talk to customers the right way is the strategist. Because customers are not stupid and they have no commitment. If you talk to them like all of your competitors, then all the data they told you was a gold mine. By the way, they told your competitor about it as well. Will not, will not make any difference. So, if we understand that it is impossible to write cliches and call it marketing, we will understand that if we decide to go for marketing in the digital age, then as once we said mobile first, say strategy first or common sense first. Give it a spin.